Hello everybody, today I'm going to go in depth into every video game hacking technique out there. This video is perfect for beginners getting into game hacking or just anyone wanting to learn all the known methods of bypassing anti-cheats in depth. Let's begin with a basic overview of game hacking. Game hacking is all about exploiting a game's weaknesses to gain unfair advantages, like using cheats for extra abilities or automating actions. Hackers constantly find new ways to bypass anti-cheat systems while developers work to block them. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the key techniques used in this ongoing battle. The first and most powerful method of game hacking is internal cheats. Internal cheats are programs or code that are injected directly into a game's process. Since they are part of the game's memory space, they have full control over everything the game does. This is incredibly powerful because the cheat acts like a native part of the game, allowing it to bypass certain restrictions. To inject an internal cheat, a method called DLL injection is used. A DLL, dynamic link library, is a file that contains code and data that can be used by multiple programs at the same time. The injection process involves loading the DLL into the game's memory, granting the cheat access to the game's internal functions. However, anti-cheats can detect this by monitoring the loaded modules. For instance, if a game finds a module in memory that doesn't belong, like a DLL cheat, it flags it as suspicious. Games like CSGO have even blocked all DLL injections. Hackers responded by using methods like manual mapping, which emulates the DLL loading process, but avoids being listed in the game's loaded modules, making detection harder. The second method are external cheats. External cheats run separately from the game, but still manipulate the game's memory. This method doesn't directly alter the game's process, making it less detectable. External cheats interact with the game's memory by opening a handle to the game process using Windows API functions like read process memory and write process memory. These functions allow the cheat to read from and modify the game's memory without being a part of the game. However, external cheats have their challenges. External cheats are easier to detect because they rely on common Windows functions. User mode anti-cheats, which don't have deep system privileges, often block external cheats by hooking these API functions. For example, they hook open process to prevent cheats from getting access to the game's memory in the first place. The third method is DMA-based cheats. DMA-based cheats use external hardware devices to access game memory directly without involving the CPU or operating system. This makes it extremely hard for software-based anti-cheats to detect it. DMA is a technology that allows peripherals, like network cards, to communicate directly with the system's memory, bypassing the CPU. DMA cheats use the same principle. A hardware device is plugged into the computer's PCIe slot and then connected to a separate computer. The second computer can directly read and write the game's memory without any cheat software running on the actual PC itself. Since no cheat software is running on the gaming computer, traditional anti-cheats can't detect it. However, DMA cheats require expensive hardware and a second computer to run the hack, making it less accessible to casual hackers. Method number four is hooking. Hooking refers to modifying or intercepting API calls or game functions to control or alter their behavior. It's a common technique used by both cheats and by anti-cheats. Hackers use hooking to override certain game or system functions. For example, a cheat might hook the game's rendering function to create an ESP overlay, showing the player where enemies are. Anti-cheats also use hooking, but in reverse. They hook critical Windows functions like load library, which is used to inject DOLs, or open process, which is used to manipulate memory, preventing cheats from using these functions to gain access to the game. One way to bypass anti-cheat hooks is by not using the hooked functions at all. Techniques like manual mapping avoid the need for load library, making it harder for the anti-cheat to block the cheat. The fifth method is kernel-level cheats. Kernel-level cheats typically use custom drivers or exploit vulnerabilities in existing drivers to execute their code in kernel mode. The cheat installs a malicious driver that interacts directly with the game's process memory, or even hardware, making it much harder for user-level anti-cheat programs to detect. Once running at this level, the cheat has full access to read and write memory, manipulate input devices, for example simulating mouse movements for aimbot, and modifying critical game functions without raising alarms. Some kernel-level cheats are so advanced that they can hide themselves in processes, they can mask their presence from anti-cheat programs by controlling what processes are visible at the user level, 
thus making detection much more challenging. You can also load custom or compromised driver and the cheat can gain access to the game's memory and resources via the driver. Kernel level cheats don't come without their challenges though. Modern anti-cheat systems are increasingly moving to kernel level detection themselves, like Riot's Vanguard or Easy Anti-Cheat, making this method much more difficult to pull off. Loading unsigned drivers or improperly written code can also lead to system instability and crashes. Hackers may need to exploit vulnerabilities in the operating system or hardware to successfully install and run their drivers without triggering detection mechanisms. The sixth and probably least common method is the virtual machine-based cheat. A virtual machine-based cheat uses hardware virtualization to create an isolated environment where the game runs inside a virtual machine while the cheat runs outside in the host system. Since the cheat operates outside the virtualized environment, it can monitor and manipulate the game without ever directly interacting with the game's process or memory from within guest OS, making it difficult for anti-cheat systems to detect. A hypervisor is used to run the game inside a virtual machine, and this hypervisor has full control over the virtual machine's memory and CPU state. The cheat can then read the memory of the VM, extracting useful information like player locations or in-game variables. By staying outside the virtualized environment, the cheat remains hidden from user mode anti-cheat software running inside the VM. Like the other methods, this doesn't come without its challenges. Setting up a VM-based cheat requires knowledge of virtualization technologies and hypervisor programming. There is also a performance overhead when running games inside virtual machines. Although hardware-assisted virtualization like Intel VTX or AMD V helps mitigate this. Furthermore, some anti-cheat systems are starting to detect when games are run inside virtual machines. Flagging this is suspicious. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to be making more videos like this in the future and teaching you guys how to actually make these. So stay subscribed.